Amen. Amen. Well, we are certainly at, heard the uh, blessing of JP's message today. And, you know, I want to, we're going to take a, kind of our habit is to spend a few minutes together just letting you share what maybe God's done in your life. And uh, thanks to Pastor Brooks and Theo and Dave who led us in that worship this morning and, and uh, that enabled us and helped us to enter into the presence of God. And, and uh, we're so blessed to have JP here. As you know, he started his 80th year of life. And we're going to celebrate that in Chicago is after his 80th birthday in next June. So our habit is just to take a few minutes as the body of Christ. This service is always, it's really one of my favorite things at the CCDA conference. And by the way, while you're there, yeah, go we're, going, we're going to have, a, we're going to have a, a, a gathering in Jackson prior to CCDA. June, June 11th and June, 12th. June 11th and 12th. We invite all of y'all to come to Jackson. Which is, Bring sleeping bag and, uh, and, uh, and, you, uh, and uh, hitchhike to get there. All right. Uh, okay. All right. BJ, turn JP's mic off for me, please. Uh, but, you know, we are so thankful, speaking of that, we're so thankful. In 1995, John and I started our American Cities campaign of touring the country and meant, went to many of your cities. We've been to 100 cities together over the last uh, 15 years or so. But one of the things that I ended every one of them with is asking people to pray for John Perkins every day. Amen. And, and I was a man of little faith. I asked people to pray that God would give him 10 more years of productive, his mind would be strong, physically strong ministry. And that ended in 2005. And God did that, and God has, he's as sharp as he's ever been. His mind is as sharp. I've heard the Damascus Road message a few times. You have to, you have to ask Vim, everybody. Y'all yeah. Y'all go get Vim. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> today, as in every time I hear it, I learn something. And I'm so thankful personally to be able to sit at the feet of John. And pray for John every day, and pray for Vera May and all the Perkins family. Uh, if you would, that would be great. So anyway, basically, we're going to have uh, we're going to have a sharing time here. We want you to come up when uh, Pastor Brooks has a microphone here, that so we can all hear you. We're not looking for speeches. We're looking if God touched your heart in a special way. This is not a business meeting. This is a church service. So come and share a word with us about what God did in your heart. Maybe in just thirty seconds or so. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we, need, we, we want a lot of people to do it. So give us a short version of it, and then Pastor Noel will lead us in our communion service. But all right, tell us your name. And my, then na my name is Irvin. I'm from Miami uh, Habitat. I came, uh, I met John a couple of years ago. He came down to visit us at a church. But I'm, I want you to know what God done for me. I was a drug addict mm. from the age of 14. From the age of 14, um, I did heroin all the way up to the, for at least 28 years, 29 years, I was struggling, and I met Jesus. And today, I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be around blessing people. You understand? I'm so happy, so joyful for being here. This is the first time I ever participated in something like this here. And it was an awesome experience. And I just want y'all to know that next year, we won't be going to Disney World. We coming to Chicago. All right, all right, all right. We all coming right. to Chicago. And I, I, I just want to thank I experienced the Freedom Walk. I, this brother here, I experienced the Freedom Walk, and it was, it was so joyful, you know? Yeah. And I got to spend time with, I got my peers here. I got Gavin, Miss Mabel. Carlo, I mean Carla, and, and we, just, we just had a wonderful time, man, and it's a blessing to be a, 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 among you people, man, that all different colors, Chinese, white, black, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's a, it's a blessing yeah. to see love. 
And like uh, John Perkins said, it's time to shine. It's time to shine. That's what we're going to do. Thank All you. Right. Okay, thank All you. right. Thank you, brother. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, brother. If you, if you have something you want to share, come on up here. Four, five, six of you we have time for so that we don't have waiting time. We want to hear from you. So here's this, our sister. Tell us your name, where you're from, and what God's done in your life, please. My name is Sharona. I'm from Indianapolis. And um, I've always been a single mom. Um, I was married, but I lost my husband about almost three years ago. And amidst that, that's when I found God. And I found God through people from Rebuilding the Wall, which is an organization that I belong to now. And I don't work there. I just volunteer. They volunteer me a lot. <laughs> and it was... I was, you know, trying to figure out a different way to raise my kids by, instead of just smacking them around and, you know, yelling at them. And it's like God came into my life, and now I'm raising two beautiful children who are 16 and 15 to walk in God's way. Yeah. And right. we need more people from CCDA to stand up and let people know that it's okay to be God's children. Right. That it's not, we don't hide it. You let it shine and let everybody know. So thank you so much. Thank you. Amen. Thank, thank you, you my sister. Dear. Thank you. Thank you. That's a great testimony. I'm Tommy Grover, and I represent Texas Baptist, and we want to say thank you for the opportunity to do the first ever Freedom Walk right here in Cincinnati Amen. to the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center. Uh, I know that Gideon's Army showed up that day because it was raining. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> And the people who went are really the most committed to this idea of ending human trafficking and modern day slavery in our lifetime. I think it's God hearing the cries of the people around the world. And we are the people who can make a difference about this. And I just want to say to all of you, you are the ambassadors in your hometown to understand human trafficking and the atrocities that are being put on people all over our world. You need to learn how to have a concept of everyday justice in your life. And I just want to say thank you for letting us have this first ever. We're coming to Chicago. We want you all to show up in Chicago and to show out. We've already talked to the people at Lawndale about how to get from the Convention Center to the Millennium Center. Right. And we want everybody to go rain or shine. Amen. Thank Great. you, sister. That's wonderful. Well, my name is Robert. Um, I currently live in La Crosse, Wisconsin. And mm. it's all right, brother. All my life, even before I came to know the Lord, you know, I've heard record, I've heard the word, word reconciliation time and time again at this conference and at my church, and that's something that my parents have been teaching me all my life, from seeing the video of Dr. King give his "I Have a Dream" speech, to hearing what was going on with 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 Rodney King and the LA LA riots in '92, to so many other things in history. But it's such a beautiful thing, not only to see. At, at the church in La Crosse where we're at, but see on a national level, all of God's children, I'm going to finish with this. It's a scripture from Galatians 3, verses 26 through 29, and this is what I see, see here. For as many of you that have put on Christ have become sons of children of Abraham, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ one, Jesus. Christ. And if you are Christ, then, then you are Abraham's seed. It is to the promise. And it's just a beautiful thing to see that scripture lived out here. Today. Amen. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Robert. Robert. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Robert. All right. Powerful. Powerful stuff. Hi, my name is Tammy. And uh, mm, Jesus. Mm, Jesus. Put it up to your mouth, Tammy. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm so grateful to God for um, allowing me to be here. I, too, am a recovering addict and a prostitute. Mm. And I thank God for this uh, journey that I'm on with him. Because he snatched yeah, me up out of the mark and Mark like yes. put me up on a rock to stay. Mm. <laughs> and I thank God for rebuilding the wall, yes, for inviting yes, me yes, here. Yes, this yes. is my first time. And I found out while I was here, my compassion is the women that's on the street. Yes. <laughs> and I've been living with... Um, mm. I found out in 1998 that I was HIV AIDS positive. 
and I did everything they told me not to do, and I'm still here. Yes, yes. And I thank God for rebuilding the wall. Mm. They've been yeah, here for Yes, me. yes, yes. Yes, Lord, we pray for our sister right now. We thank you for her testimony. We thank you for the way you've worked in her life. We thank you for the CCDA folks in ministry in Indianapolis that have reached out to her, Lord. And we thank you for her life for you, and we pray that you would just work in her life and use her in the vineyard and in the kingdom. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, dear. Christina Comer and I'm a student at Duke Divinity School. Um, I came here um, by way of um, sort of a crooked road but I had the opportunity this summer to um, spend some time with Dr. Perkins in Jackson, Mississippi and do a um, field ed placement through the Center for Reconciliation at Duke and so there's a group of us that are here and um, my life truly has been changed because of stories like this, of all those that have gone before me, and of the vision that, um, that is here. I've never seen anything like this where we're bringing together social justice and kingdom causes and, and keeping them rooted in Scripture and in Christ and lifting Christ above all so that all people will be drawn unto him and not unto us and not into our ministries but unto Christ and um, so I just thank God for this place where I feel finally for the first time in my life like I fit in somewhere <laughs> and so thank you thank amen you amen everyone. thank you Yate. Uh, my name is Mark Charles. I come here from the Navajo Reservation in Arizona. And uh, this conference has just reminded me of two things. And uh, the first is what an incredible privilege and honor and blessing it is for all of us to be counted among the workers in the vineyard. Um, and the second thing of just hearing these stories and being a part of, of God's work and being here and, and building these relationships and partnerships, um, sometimes the, the blessings of God are so extravagant and the mercies of God are so incredible and the love of God is so abundant that the only thing we can do is to humbly bow our heads and whisper the words thank you. So thank you, Father in heaven, for allowing us all to be here. And thank you Amen. for letting me be a part of this conference this Amen. week. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We're going to have uh, this gentleman in the back with his hat on. He'll be our last person to share. We'll just take the group right here. But thank you. By names, I'm called Pastor Sebriva John from Uganda. And... Uh, It is really true when the Bible says that God chose the despised ones, the neglected ones, and brings them to the kingdom. Yes. Who am I to be here? I grew up as an orphan. Nobody had wanted me. Mm. But if I see myself here, standing before men and women of God, People with the intelligent men and women. Yes. As I said, I grew up as an orphan. Mm. I reached a time where there was no more sponsorship. My sponsor, she was from the Netherlands, and she, he was an old man, and said no more sponsorship. But that time I was committed in a small church, fasting for some 40 days, Saying, God, let me die from here. Because there was nowhere to go. But I didn't know that God was putting anointing on my life. Yes. In order to reach the world. Mm. Briefly, because this is a testimony. I'm glad to be here for this wonderful and powerful ministry of CCDA. This is my first time. And what you are teaching us. Reverend Bishop uh, John, it is powerful. I am John, but 
It is powerful. I was crying last day when we were teaching. I said, God, this is what the world need. If only can give this gentleman power yes. and more life and strength. He may move into the whole world. Then men shall hear the word. So I'm happy to be here. I'm John Sebeliba, having 10 churches in, in, Kampa, in, in Uganda, a three hours drive from Kampala, mm. deep in the village. Yes. When I see you people, and I begin to remember where I come from, I begin to cry. Mm -hmm. I begin to cry. All right. God bless. Thank you, Brother Thank John you. from Thank Uganda. You. Amen. Thank you. My name is Deborah Mays. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. I'm on staff with Campus Crusade for Christ, and I direct Here's Life in a City in Louisville, Kentucky. I want to share a transferable concept taught to me by my mom. I'm a disciple of Christ, and when we see all of us, nobody knows what to name us. We're not a melting pot. We're not a salad bowl. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. With he himself as the chief cornerstone. My mother died in 2005. I'm one of 10 children, and she brought us up saying we've got to learn to respect each other for our differences and thank God for what we have in common. If we do that, the world can't touch us. Mm -hmm. And so I thank him for that, and I love you, all of you, and I trust that he who began a good work in all of us yes. will continue to complete it, and he will make us one. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I just wanted to share something from the, the word this morning that, that really testified to me. In Acts 2, Peter gives a sermon, and it says the people were cut to their hearts. And they said, brothers, what, what must we do now? In Acts 7, Stephen gives a sermon, and the Pharisees there were cut to their hearts, and they stoned him. And what I want to say is that I just to pray that we would be cut to our hearts by the gospel, by what we see mm. that Jesus has done for us, by what we see, by the people that we've seen who mm. were being crucified in our world. Yes. And I think that what, what's so beautiful to me about this, for a lot of my life, I kind of used my social justice thing as sort of a barricade against doing God's will. You know, mm -hmm. like, okay, well, I'm going to do this social justice thing. I'm not, you know, uh, that's, my, that's my thing or something. And to be able to, to worship God with all my heart and to love my neighbor because I love God. Yeah. And not, yeah. not as some kind of defense mechanism against, you know, being, mm -hmm. being God's, you know, and respecting his sovereignty. I, I, just, um, I just thank God. All right. And, um, and I just pray that all would come to know that we are part of his kingdom yeah. and that he is the king. Yes. And he is the reason that we do what we do. Mm -hmm. Lord, yes. cut us to the heart. Amen. Thank you, brother. Wonderful. Hi, um, my name is P.H. Copeland from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, I just graduated college in May, and I'm working at an amazing organization in St. Paul across the river, which we never really do. Um, as a discipleship coordinator for my young girls, um, teenagers rather. Last night um, during worship, um, they instructed us to get with those that we came with or with other people that we don't may know mm -hmm. and just pray. Um, and last night in the circle of women that I was with, I just had this overwhelming feeling and presence of God. And he was just saying how proud he is of us and how we're doing things right and I think that as we're growing up and as we're going out we're like are we really doing things right are we really doing what you say that we're that you called us to do are we hearing your voice and he was just like we're doing things right yes. that we are supposed to be here that we're supposed to be instructed and loving each other mm. and being real and honest even though it hurts yes and so I just encourage you all encourage myself that even when times are hard, even when we don't think that we're doing the right thing, that we really are. Mm -hmm. And just ask for more grace and for more support and for more love. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tina Brown, and I'm from McLean, Mississippi. 
and this is my first conference. I've been to many conferences, and I am just so high. I've never been naturally high before, mm -hmm. but it's almost like I'm so high I cannot contain myself. All right. Because I right. really can cut up. All right. I know y'all have noticed me. Yeah. I'm like one of the most unusual people in the world, mm -hmm. and I just want to testify that CCDA has motivated me so. I've called back to McLean. I live in one of the prejudiced cities in the world. Mm -hmm. I live it's about 200 people, maybe 150 people, and I only discovered 10 years ago that there was prejudice still existing because my father committed suicide at the eight when I was in the eighth grade. So I was a present, but I was absent. All I right. really didn't see what was going on with me. But one day I went to Walmart and I was trying to do a fundraiser for the children. And one of the ladies told me that they didn't give it to you because you was black. And I looked and I went like, huh? What? What? When? When that happened, and I started crying, and my friend, she hit me. She said, stop being silly, Tina. Don't you know where we at in Mississippi? And I began to weep. I said, uh-uh, I'm not going to do this because in my after school, I go pick up the Caucasian. I go pick up the Asian. It doesn't matter. And I tell you, I didn't know. But you have put me at a level now that when I go back, I will sing the song of CCDA. I've called preachers. I said, why haven't you told me about this? Why haven't you tapped me into this thing? And I found out, I've gotten your book, The Moses group way Miss Judah hallelujah All because right. of them I'm trying to talk really fast because I know I could take you he was looking like yeah go ahead get through but anyway all right and, and, and this I just let me tell this just a little bit please I just beg you please and anyway, the Moses group came to Mississippi during the Hurricane Katrina, and I was videoing, and I was loving that all the blacks and the whites had got together, and we was eating. And I mean, I tell you, and the Moses group came to our rescue. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't even give me water. I went, and I said, can I get some water? They said, no, because you don't live in the city limits. I said, huh? I said, I'm confused. And I began, I said, Mama, you tell me here, I grew up in a town where they didn't even like me. No wonder all the white children rode one bus and we were all another. I didn't know that. And they wouldn't even give me water because I didn't live in the city limits because I lived so in the rural. Mm. And I had to run out of money and we was trapped. But I'm so glad to the Moses group that came to our rescue. And I've been working in the community since I was 18. My sisters and everybody left. They said they wouldn't come back. Mm -hmm. And when I was leaving, I told Miss Jude, I said, I got to leave the city. I got to leave this little community. I said, they won't let me breathe. Everybody know me, the superintendents. And when they see me, they run from me Amen. because I'm trying to pull us together. All right. But I just want you to know this. Yes. That you have put me in a level. That there's no turning back. I will be a follower All right. as, le as a leader. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're so stupid people. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. You remind me of Fannie Lou Hamer. My name is Matt from Little Village in Chicago. And uh, I guess I came up here just as uh, asking you guys to pray. Um, just got a text from somebody back there that one of our youth we were working with for two years named David was shot and is in critical condition in the hospital. Could you just, mm, yeah. uh, I'm sick mm. of these young people dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, All right, could you Matt. just pray for Yeah, let's yeah. pray. Lord, we, uh, we thank you for Matt and, and his heart as he's moved into Little Village and works there, Lord, uh, in South Lawndale. We thank you for him. We thank you in Chicago. Thank you for all of those which is symbolic of people, everyone in this room and others in CCDA who have moved in and live and some have never left but stay there in hard areas and troubled areas, Lord. Lord, right now we specifically lift, lift up David to you who's been shot. We don't know the circumstances, but Lord, we pray that your hand would be upon him. We pray for your healing hand to help the doctors and the nurses and all who are there with him, Lord. Be with his family now and use this to bring people to you. We pray for him in a special way. Be with those at La Vita and that are dealing with it back there. Give them wisdom and comfort, Lord, in this moment. And Lord Jesus, we thank you for all of the voices that we've heard this morning and many voices that didn't speak up, Lord. We thank you for the way you've used CCDA in all of our lives. And as John has reminded us this morning, Lord, CCDA is about you, 
Jesus. It's about our faith in you when we commit our lives to you on the Damascus Road. It's about you when the Emmaus Road, Lord, when you were on the Emmaus Road, that we can be discipled, that we would commit our lives and we would walk with you the rest of our lives. And then, Lord, it's about the Jericho Road, that we would be a, on that road of compassion and of helping and of making a difference in the lives of the hurting people. So, Lord, we just pray that you would be with all of CCDA folks all over, whether they came to the conference or not, that you would encourage them this morning and that you would guide them. Lord, now as we focus our attention upon you, your death and your resurrection for us, we lift up that time of, of communion today. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Pastor Noel is going to lead us in our time. Thank you all. Somebody already said it this morning, but instead of setting the bar down here and saying that we're a multi-ethnic organization or association, uh, we're going to set the bar where Jesus put it and says, Somos la familia de Dios. We're the family of God. So turn to your neighbor and say, uh, you're part of my family. And if they're a brother, say, you're my brother. If they're a sister, say, you're my sister. Right? I don't know about you, but uh, I come from a big family. On my mother's side, there's 18, she had 18 brothers and sisters. On my dad's side, there was 12 brothers and sisters. I got hundreds of cousins in Texas. Basically, I'm, I'm related to almost every Mexican in the state of Texas. And, you know, uh, you got a big family. And look around. This is only a small part of the family of God that uh, God has assembled. And our family, though it be dysfunctional, okay, I used to be so angry at my family because we were so jacked up, you know. And I, I used to talk so badly, I, you know, I mean, because uh, the hurt was there about uh, all that I wish it would have been, and I could blame everybody. But then I started to get to know some of your families, and I'm thinking, my family wasn't so bad. <laughs> you know, uh, we, but isn't it wonderful? Even though we're a, a bit dysfunctional, we're God's family, and God is in the process of bringing healing and restoration to every one of us. So this morning... Um, we want to celebrate what many families and many cultures already understand, that the most important hour of the day and the week is the family table. When you leave everything behind and you come together and sit around that living room table or the kitchen table or wherever it is, and you just come and eat whatever's on the table, it may be arroz and frijoles, it may be, a, you know, a little potato, it may be the greens, it may be, you know, all that food, it might be that welfare cheese, I don't know what it is, right? <laughs> Good cheese, right? A lot of creative stuff we made with that cheese. <laughs> but see, that family meal is the most important meal, uh, you know, uh, the function, ritual of the family, because... It's where we come together, and it's where we nurture each other. And so Jesus says, you know, uh, my family, y you got to have a family meal. And to prove to you that this family is going to live on into all eternity, I am going to give you my own body and my own blood to nurture you so that you might be agents of love and reconciliation, the kind of love that allowed me to even break my own body and give it to willfully to demonstrate my love for you, so that the family would be nurtured, would be strengthened, would be united. And when you take of this bread, when you drink of this cup, you'll never forget the price that it took for family unity so that you might be together, so that you would get over all your differences. The power of God is at work at this place. He's teaching us que somos familia. We're family. Uh, 
I got to just tell you one thing because this brings it home to me in a powerful way. Um, a few months, month and a half ago, we did a, a CCDA call. Anybody that wanted to come on and learn about uh, health care reform. And it was a little controversial and people were, you know, because it's such a complicated deal and, you know,